God, this sounds fantastic. But listen to that. Oh, yes. Big fan. Hello everybody, welcome to Chaz Draycott Media, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and welcome to another episode of Gran Turismo 2. Last time round we completed South City, we then decided, well, we didn't really have much choice, we then started work on East City, which has got 46 races in total. We're just starting to make our way through Toyota and we've got to the Starlet meetings. Now we do not have a Starlet, but I imagine we can pick one up for very, very little, because oh, Chaz here, in his fluffy pajamas forgot about the used car markets and the japanese manufacturers in this game so rather than just the new lineup you can have used cars and you get them very very cheap so we're going to try and have a look at some starlets see what sort of money we can save on it we don't have to do a racing modify race in this one if that makes sense we don't have to racing modify it and spend 80 grand so we could get something like a starlet glanzer which Chaz absolutely loves and has wanted for a very long time not in purplish blue mica metallic though now that looks better, bluish silver metallic. I love a starlet, they're just such cool looking things. So that's bought then, let's get a move on. And I think, to be honest, we just go straight to the race and see what we can do without spending any more money. Let's just try it, shall we? There's no harm done, I guess. This is going to be our 300th day in the game as well, by the way, so it's not technically our 300th race, but still, it's a nice benchmark or a nice uh, milestone. That's the word. Seattle Shore is not a bad circuit either, that'll do. Doesn't feel as pokey as the uh, as the Salikas did. Even on just revving it, you can tell. We've got a teammate next to us, as we did in the Salikas. Now we're doing Seattle short reverse here. We'll sneak through the middle of there. Look at the old square starlets there, Min. Oh, it doesn't go all the way up the dial on the right before red lining. Oh my goodness me. That was a big old clown to the wall, that one. Look at that little starlet jiggling its way around Seattle. Sorry. Oh, extra sorry. Merry Christmas. Merry Chrysler. Oh, God. This is not going well. I'm trying to push the little starlet a bit too hard, I think. Get off. It's great round there. Wow. All right, let's just chill. I love the love, love, love that white one. Love that. You've got to have a glanzer in V. In, in V? God, I'm really struggling to get my words out today. I'm so sorry. You've got to have a style of glanzer in white like that one. Get the run. Oh, I ran into the back of the red one. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, all right. Didn't do much good that, did it, mate? We really need a good run out of the final corner here and, of course, through this right-hander at the bottom. This is going to be vital, whether we win this race or not. Nope, didn't work. Neither did that either. Ah, oh, man. Then again, we haven't made any modifications to it, to be fair, so it's going to be a completely level playing field with all the other cars. Looks like our teammate could potentially steal a win there. Go on. It's close across the line, but whatever that beige thing is at the front has won it. The Starlet Turbo S. Wait, so we didn't get a Glanzer? Is ours not a Glanzer? It's got a big Glanzer sticker on the side of it. That's really strange. So time to go back to the drawing board and modify our Toyota style a little bit. I'm just going to do not massively expensive mods, but we're going to put some... No, not super soft. We're going to put some racing hards on it. And then we're going to mess with the clutch, make the gear changes a lot quicker. Four and a half grand there. Change the flywheel to a racing lightened flywheel. Maybe just see whether we can give it a little bit more power. And the exhaust takes it up to 100. No. No, because I always say this. The AI ups the power to match your car. That's like the sort of the underline of everything that the AI does, is they match your car for power. If you can sort it out with the handling and stuff, then you've basically got a winner. I'm really struggling to get my words out today. I'm really sorry. Might not be best that I record some Tower Simulator 3 later because an air traffic controller needs to be able to say the right things, doesn't he? So let's go back to the Starlet meeting and see whether we can win this time around. Special stage route five. Okay, so we're going to be racing at night. Go on, little Starlet. Redeem yourself. Let's listen to the gear changes. 
much nicer. Okay, we're doing it in reverse as well. Giggity. Oh god, look at that. Look at the difference. Hey oh, mate, it's the same guy from last time. This is where the tires will make the difference now. Whoa, frame rate went a bit dodgy then. I'm not sure if that came across in the video, but big stutter. Wow, don't need to brake or anything through there. Just throw it in. Oh, low revs, low revs. Go, go, go. Oh, mind the barrier, Chaz, come on. This feels frantic, even though it's quite slow. <laughs> Maybe the music's not helping either. It's all very loud. Still got the field right behind us. Ah, oh, low revs. Doesn't really help. That's not where the power band is. Hug the wall all the way around. Lovely. Go on. Oh, hit the limiter. No. Ah, oh, it's embarrassing. 100 miles an hour in the starlet. I can hear something getting louder behind me. Oh, God, they're flying. Oh, I've got way too hot. Way too hot into there. I sort of feel bad for the last couple of races on the channel because you've not really seen many cars in front of me, to be honest. I didn't really want it to be a playthrough where we decimate the field in every race, you know. It's all about the grind and the hard work to win these races and the battles that come with it. But when you take the lead early on and just disappear over the horizon, it's not as much fun to watch. And I appreciate that, you know. I'm not trying to make it that way, but I don't really want to be wasting my time and lose every race, do I? I'm good enough at doing that on my own, to be honest. Oh, that was nice. That felt very sprightly around there. Thing is with these slower cars is that it hurts your thumb. You're pressing down A or X for so long and pressing it so hard to make the car just go that it just kills. I'd say that was successful, though. Lovely stuff by the Glanzer. It is a Glanzer, I'm telling you. Across the line. That'll do. Lovely little starlet. Crack him. No. And that's that challenge complete. I can't even remember what the next one is. Only one way to find out. It's nice and snug in these pyjamas, I must admit. Could fall asleep here. <laughs> okay, so the MRS trophy. So this is for the Toyota MRS, not the MR2. Do we... We had one of these, did we not? Or did we have a special one, like a... Can't remember. We did still have that for the Sleekers. It's got less power than the GT4 that we bought though, so oh well. We do not, however, have a Toyota MRS, and I know that at the time that might have been quite a new car as well, so this might cost a little bit more than the previous ones. We'll see if we can get a used one anyway. We'll try. I know that's a horrible noise, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. MR Spider, is that what MRS stands for? No. And it did say 1996 on it, Chaz, so you should know that it's not what you're after. No MRSs in the used car section, so we're going to have to buy a brand new one. There's a lot of cars in these. So there's the MRS S edition up there. Uh, is that the only one you can buy? It is. 19,800 quid. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, to be fair. I was expecting maybe 30, 40. Now, my mate's mum used to have one in this green, so I'm going to buy one in that colour because it was, like, the fastest car I'd ever been in when uh, when she drove me home one day because I stayed at his and my mum couldn't come and get me or something. His mum offered to drive me home in that, and it was, it was epic. Now, again, we don't need to race and modify this, but we are going to put tyres on it minimum because just having that extra grip just helps out a little bit more. Maybe not sports tyres... Let's go for racing slicks and go for hards, shall we? Because as some of you have pointed out before, that amplifies everything that the car does compared to just doing one thing like suspension or power, for example. Okay, third challenge with Toyota, let's go. Autumn ring. Did not expect to see that one in this episode. I don't know why, I just didn't. <laughs> oh, look at the little pack of Crayola. Other crayon brands are available. We start again with a teammate at the back of the grid. Excuse me. Wow, the frame rate really does die there for some reason. No, I'm not getting I'm not getting hung out to dry again. This isn't garden party. Oh. Well that worked. Excuse me. Yes. Likey. Don't like it. Stay flat. What a save. Oh. Hello. Oh. That was just terrible driving, I'm so sorry. 
I tried to get a cutback and go down the inside, but it just didn't work. Just drove into him, to be fair. Still, we've got the lead on the exit of the hairpin. I can hear him on my left. And he's still there, but not close enough. Whoa. Whoa. Got to remember, Chaz is mid-engined, so you do get that pendulum effect. I really like this circuit, you know. I love Autumn Ring. Fantastic racetrack. Okay, across the line, end of lap one. We're leading the race. We have quite the advantage by the sound of it as well. So we're doing okay here. Happy with this. Oh, that was oh, that was sublime. What a great little car this is. I really enjoy this. God, that corner never ends. Oh, God. Suddenly seemed to spit right then when I changed up. It's got a great punch out of the corners. Feels really nice. It's obviously one of the most modern cars in the game as well, so it is going to feel a bit more planted and refined than all the others. And I was talking to a friend of mine about this recently. You know, I've mentioned it a few times during this playthrough here on Gran Turismo 2 that it's mad how a game this old can give you such a connection to the cars, like how you can feel like you're driving it and you'll be like, oh, the handling's great, you know, it feels like it's got good acceleration and this, that, and the other. You can pick up on certain elements of how a car behaves and in a game this old, that is amazing. Anyway, what else is amazing is this car because across the line we go and we've taken another victory in the Toyota Manufacturer Challenges. And that makes me a very happy boy. All the same car, of course, because there's not many variations of it at this point. And we can move on. Three grand back in. We've depleted that quite quickly, because I think, didn't we have 771k before or something? I don't want to save at that point. Let's carry on. Now, the next challenge is one that I've actually been looking forward to, which is the Alteza Cup. I love an Alteza, also known, of course, as the Lexus IS200. It's basically the same car, but the Alteza is the proper Japanese one, as they say. So we need to buy ourselves one of those, because I don't think we have one, do we? thing is, we've got that many cars in our garage that I just forget what we've got, to be honest with you. I think we might have had an Alteza at some point, but maybe got rid of it. We are going to need to buy an Alteza, unfortunately. Then again... There's worse things to have to do. And again, we'll have a look at them used, but considering that it's the car on the cover photo there, doubt we're going to find one. And no, there are no Altezas. So 24 grand. That's not too bad, to be honest with you. The RS200. That's interesting. So Lex, I didn't notice this before. Lexus within Toyota. There's a Sprinter Torino BZR. Wow. That's basically the Levin that I used to own. Oh, there's the Corolla Levin BZR. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing very well here, am I? <laughs> I need to get to bed. Okay, Alteza. Admittedly, I think they look great in silver. I don't want to buy a yellow one. We'll just go with it. No time to be wasted. Now, we do eventually have to racing modify this one, so we are going to tune it up. We're going to do quite a few bits to this one. We're going to do tyres. We're going to sort out the clutch and the flywheel as well. And we're also going to lightweight it as well, do all the weight reduction to it. East City definitely has some of the best music in the game, doesn't it? That's all done now, so the only thing left to do is jump back into the event, try and squeeze in one more race in this episode. Let's go. Midfield raceway as well. The game's been kind to me for once. Oh, that's a good noise. I'm not sure on the wheels. I wish I'd have changed the wheels. Let's not forget, they are rear wheel drive. A friend of mine, Pete, used to have one of these. Although I think his was the Lexus IS200 and he had it as a proper drift car with a full-blown roll cage, massive hydro handbrake on it, and it's amazing. And Pete's a really good driver as well. Excuse me. And again, we're straight to the front of the field. God, this sounds fantastic. Sounds like an even higher rev in Super Toro. Listen to that. Oh, yes. Big fan. Maybe too excited by the noise. No? Wow. Really does handle well as well. Now underneath we've obviously done a lot to this car, so you'd hope that it would handle well. You'd hope that it would win a race. Oh, that's just glorious. Big slide. Down the gears. Hard on the brakes. Floor it. Don't let it oversteer. Nice. This has got some poke, this thing. I like it. Oh, God, that was a very big twitch to the right. So we're not disappearing up the road, as is the case in Gran Turismo 2. The catch-up is very real. <laughs> I like the sound this... God. I like the sound this makes a lot. Nice and smooth around there. And again, it's another race where we've not really seen any other cars, I'm afraid. This is the sort of progress we need to make. I'm 
listening will be making no progress if I carry on driving like that. Oh, I'm excited to see what this is like when we race and modify it. What a car. What a car. And what a win. The Toyota Altezza takes the victory at Midfield Raceway. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, all that's left now to do is to racing modify it, but that's going to take place in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying it. Have a fantastic new year, and I will see you in 2023.